stores and boutique shops. Great place to visit, by the way. There's also a few more restaurants and bars. But definitely take the time to walk through there because it's a very special part of the city. Now, in 1941, when we uh, opened the Riverwalk, included in the original design is this theater here. It's called Artisan River Theater. On the left is all the seating. On the right, there's a stage. And right above the stage, on the right are five bronze bells. Each bell representing a mission in San Antonio. The most popular mission is the Alamo. Now, this theater, folks, made an appearance in a movie you might have seen. It's called Miss Congeniality with Sandra Bullock. The bikini contest scene is actually shot here. We use it today for concerts, plays, holiday celebrations, pep rallies. Any sort of live event you can think of will take place here. We use it all year long as well. Now, we are traveling, ladies and gentlemen, on an all-natural river called the San Antonio River. The developed portion of the river is actually what we call the River Walk. The San Antonio River flows all the way down, meets up with the Guadalupe a couple hundred miles south of here, then flows into the Gulf of Mexico. The River Walk today is now 15 miles long. Now, on the right, we have a big bronze sculpture of a cattleman. And the reason we do, well, San Antonio, like many Texas cities, has a long history in the cattle industry. Directly behind that, a lot of our history, by the way, is right there in that building. It's called the Briscoe Western Art Museum. Artifacts like Santa Ana's ceremonial soul, San Antonio, Poncho Villa's last known saddle, and a fully restored vintage state coat wagon is also on display. So many of you will be here. Elena, Malena, Tolte, Anki, Lupita, Joan, Nan. We're of course going to see some amazingly beautiful scenery. Most trees on the river that you're going to see are the There are some other variations that I'm going to be showing you along the way. This is a great myrtle tree, for example, on the left. So lots to see. And I'll introduce you, of course, to our history and our culture as we go along. But I'm also going to show you some really unique features of the river along so. Now, of course, I mentioned low bridges. Well, this is one of them. <laughs> Guys, this is the bridge my taller co-workers have nightmares about. <laughs> Just fine with me, though. <laughs> Perfect height. Now, on the right, we got uh, a island here. And that's what we call marriage island because over 200 marriage ceremonies take place right on this little piece of land here Sensible. with the black iron sculpture on it. The sculpture is known as Father Massonet's table. It marks the spot where Father Damien Massonet performed the Catholic, the first Catholic Mass. Now, the island is all natural, guys. It's actually formed by the roots of the cypress tree here. It took, of course, many decades to form that island. And it's roughly into the shape of all the Elena, I've seen as many marriages take place there in a single day. Marriages take place there, by the way, all year round. Mostly in the summer, but I have seen people get married there in the winter. Sometimes I think it's probably a pretty good spot to get married. Because you can only fit so many people on the island, guys. Great way to save some money. <laughs> right? Yeah. On the right, we got the Weston Hotel. Built here in 1999. And it is the hotel that indeed has the contract with the NBA, so this is where all visiting NBA teams stay when they come in town to play the Spurs. Now on the left, there's a rather tall office building here, and it's got a big American flag waving right at the top. <laughs> That's what we call the Tower Life Building. Today it's owned by the Tower Life Insurance Company, but it was originally built in 1929. Now, I'll tell you some interesting features. If you look at the top, you're going to notice something. This building has little fingers that stick out from up there. Those are actually gargoyles, by the way. The original owner <laughs> for being very superstitious. Very concerned with evil spirits. So they put gargoyles at the top in an effort to scare away those evil spirits. You can also look on the side of the building. Right beneath the second floor windows, there is a, uh, uh, a row very ghoulish faces staring at us. And once again, these faces were also meant to scare away any evil spirits in the area. Mm. Well, unfortunately, the owners of the building, the original owners, opened their building on June 1st of 1929. Well, several months later, in October, 
the stock market crashed. The Great Depression oh, began shortly hey. thereafter. The building had to be sold. I mean, <laughs> this building in 1929, it cost three million dollars to build. After the crash, though, they can only sell it for Cristo Rivera. Aquí va a estar más o menos. Bueno, Joana García, venga, ven. Aquí vamos a tener aquí al ministerio muy pronto. Al ministerio Cristo Rivera. All right, if you look straight ahead, you're going to be looking at our courthouse. The big red sandstone building directly in front of us. Por fe, por fe, por fe. It's what's called the Bear County Courthouse. Hello. Uh, hola. <laughs> now as we make this turn if you'd like you can look down the left side of the boat just so you know folks the river walk does not end here we just change direction if you look uh, down the left side you're going to be looking south and the river walk continues for another 10 miles in that direction that'll take you all the way down to the missions by the way. if you oh. head north here for about two more miles you're going to end up at a place called the pub pearl is where they used to make cold beer brewery and now it's completely refurbished with new shopping restaurants bars hotels condos great place to visit too this channel we're in is known as the flood channel 1921 guys the floods of that year rose to eight feet above street level caused a lot of damage took a lot of human lives too so today we are fortunate to have this because it works in, in conjunction with our system of floodgates that's why we don't worry about flooding. In fact, we haven't had flooding down here in years. Now, on the left, you're going to see a couple hundred locks attached to a fence right up there. The reason we have that is because there's a wedding chapel up there, and it's become a tradition once you get married there for couples to come out, put a lock on the fence, then they'll take the key to the lock and throw it in the river as a symbol of their love and devotion to each other. Pretty nice, pretty sweet, right? Yeah. Now, there are some combination locks that go up there from time to time, so got to be careful with that. I haven't seen anybody come back from their lock yet, though. <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah. Now, on the left, there's a sign that says Main Plaza. Main Plaza, folks, is where one of the oldest churches in the entire country is located. It's known as the what? San Fernando Cathedral, established in 1731. It's also a final resting place for some of the fighters at the Battle of the Alamo. You walk up the stairs to Main Plaza and you'll see it right in front of you. That's also where they do the laser show, folks, and it is going on tonight if you want Amen. to see it. There's a show at 9 o'clock, a show at 9.30, and a show at 10. Amen, Joanna. All the shows, by the way, are free. So no charge, but check it out if you like. Really good show, actually. All right, we're going to take a ride. Right get right back into the all-natural section of the river. First, though, I want to show you the oldest tree on the river. You see this bald cypress tree directly in front of the boat? It's about 90 feet tall. That's what we call the Ben Milam tree, estimated today to be over 400 years old. Now, in 1835, when we were fighting Mexico for independence, an early Texas pioneer by the name of Ben Milam climbed that tree. And the reason he did he wanted to spy on Mexican troop movements to help out the war effort. Well, unfortunately, he uh, was spotted by a sniper in the Mexican army, and he lost his life to that sniper. <laughs> so that's why the tree now bears his name, simply to honor his sacrifice. All right, folks, well, we're getting out of the flood channel. We're now back in the all-natural section of the river. And I want to show you something kind of peculiar here. If you look on the right, you're going to notice a tree there. The thing that's strange is that the tree is actually growing out of a stone wall. Right there on the right. Well, I don't really have an explanation for this, but what I can tell you is that, like I mentioned earlier, there's a huge flood in 1921. It is said that the flood water that year was so powerful that it actually forced the seedling for the tree into the wall, and ever since then it's been growing there. The tree you see growing I mean, there, by the way, today, I mean, well, that's Jefferson. a fig tree. So, like I said, I don't really have any other explanation for it, but that is what the legend says. I'm not sure if it's true, but that is what the legend says. 
All right, the Esquire Tavern on the right, folks. There is no legend associated with the Esquire Tavern. It is the very first bar to open on the river. And it opened very conveniently, by the way. It's right at 12.01 a.m. the day after Prohibition in. <laughs> yeah. I already had a fully stocked bar, too, when it opened. It was pretty incredible. Today, they built a new hotel right above it. So that's why you see the new construction there. And it's supposed to be open by Christmas, but we'll see. <laughs> All right. We're about to see the Aztec Theater here. We on the right side of the boat. You're going to see also a long line of people because, yes, we have another ticket office here. So they're just waiting for the Amen. Gracias, Ivana. Gracias, Ivana. Gracias, Ivana. But take a look on the right, guys. There's a large concrete figure there of an Aztec goddess. Right there. Well, that marks the Aztec Theater. It's an old silent movie theater. It originally opened in 1926. And we still use it today for concerts, plays, and comedy shows. Great place to see a show, by the way, guys. Now, I'm sure you've all heard of Jennifer Lopez, right? Well, many years ago, Jennifer Lopez filmed a scene of the movie Selena right here on this walkway bridge, the one we're about to go under. So we call this bridge today Selena's Bridge. It is also where Selena's husband proposed marriage to her. In case you didn't know, Selena, guys, was a very popular Tejano singer who lost her life very tragically. And Jennifer Lopez played her in the movie Selena, which came out back in 1997. So, pretty popular spot to get your photo taken here. I've also seen a lot of marriage proposals oh. here as well. Oh. On the left, the white stucco building there is one of the oldest buildings on the river. This one? 1852, uh, actually. If we do and at that time, it functioned as a school. It was an all-boys school. Right, now, for many, many years, that school continued to operate and grow until eventually it got big enough to be called... Amen, Ivan, 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 Después la victoria que hizo Jesús en el Now, I'm step away from the history real quick, because I want to show you, we have an optical illusion down here on the river. I want you guys to see it. Once we get out from underneath this iron bridge, I highly recommend you look left. When you look left, look up. You're going to see what looks like a freestanding wall. So look up and look left. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> tremendo, ¿eh? It's like a wall all by itself. And that's because it's actually a wall all by itself. It's really a hospital, folks. This is called the Nick Hospital. It was built here in 1930. Amen, Johanna. Yes, yes. This is where Carol Burnett. Lo bueno que aquí estando aquí el centro acá de de que tú le vieras entre la zona aquí aquí como la sede aquí en San Antonio. Ustedes pues, tienen la posibilidad de venir, de venir acá a pasear. Tienen que entrar a sacar la liberación y ver cómo se aquí enseguida. Y a todos se le da la visa americana. Is one of the many hotels that is the Hyatt Regency. Now, the interesting fact about the Hyatt Regency is that it's only 16 floors tall. And I'll tell you why. San Antonio folks has a city ordinance that disallows any building from casting a shadow upon the Alamo. Well, if you walk directly through the lobby of this hotel, you're going to uh, pass a beer garden and then end up in Alamo Plaza right on the other side. Now, the Alamo, we consider to be a war memorial. And out of respect for those who lost their lives, no building is allowed to cast a shadow on it. So when this was built in 1981, that's why they had to stop at the 16th floor. And that's why today you will never see a tall building around Esta fue la blanca que invitó acá. Me toca en San Antonio. La organizó todo, organizó todo el seminario. The San Antonio River, folks, 
is actually supplied with water by an underground aquifer called the Edwards Aquifer. Comes to the surface of a, on a local on the campus of a local college called the University of Illinois. Like I mentioned earlier, it flows a few hundred miles south, meets up with the Guadalupe River, and then goes directly into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, sounds like we got some live mariachi music, which is not uncommon. This is an area, by the way, we call River Square. Lots of restaurants, lots of bars. Take a look around, guys. Because if you haven't visited here yet, I'd recommend it. This is where the best food and the best drinks on the river get served. Amén, hermano Iván. En diligencia hay bendición. Oh, ya. Yeah. Bueno. <laughs> amén, amén. Vamos a montar aquí el, el Centro Mundial de Liberación aquí en San Antonio. ¿Ah? Oh, en el, en el... oh, wow. Ah, oh, bueno, ve. Amén, Joana, sí, en la parte de México aquí. This is of a gentleman by the name of Robert Huffman. He is the architect who designed the river wall. Oh, yeah. Only 24 years old when he did. He first submitted his plan in 1929, but because of the Great Depression, there was no money to build it. So construction did not begin until 1939. It completed in April of 1941. Hi. Is it blue light? That much, folks. 50,000 people showed up for the inaugural event of the San Antonio Riverwalk. Can you imagine 50,000 people down here all at once? That must have been crazy. And guys, at that time, the Riverwalk was about 15 miles long like it is today. It's only about four to five miles long. All right, we're going to take a left into the only other man-made section of the Riverwalk. Guess what we call this? That's right, we call it the man-made section. <laughs> yes, very creative name, don't you think? Oh, yeah. Now, the other man-made section was the, the uh, flood channel right over there, which we saw, oh, you know, 10, 15 minutes ago. So, there's only two man-made sections, the flood channel and this section. The rest of the river is all natural. Over the years, we've actually expanded the river walk, and that's why we have two man-made sections today. This section came about in the year 1968. <laughs> the reason we built it that particular year is because, guys, San Antonio was the host city for the World's Fair in 68. So we built this because the World's Fair took place in Hemisphere Park, which is right at the end of this section. We built this for convenience so people could have easy access to the World's Fair and the downtown portion of the city. Ah, <laughs> Now, most of the river walk, folks, I don't think I mentioned it earlier, but most of it is three to four feet deep, guys. Now, we do have instances where people do fall in the river, but it doesn't happen that often. A few weeks ago, I actually saw a jogger jog straight into the river. He zigged when he should have zagged. And, uh, well, he just got up, got out of the river, continued on with his jog. I'm sure he probably jogged uh, up a couple extra miles, but I'm sure it was very refreshing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he was definitely wet. <laughs> All right, now coming into view, I want to tell you about this hotel. It's that large pink stone building. You're going to see it better once we kind of go through this turn here. But it's got the word Marriott written in red at the top. Well, that is the Marriott River Center. It's a hotel built here back in 1988. And I'm going to tell you the story of how it got built. See, in the early 80s, Marriott picked that spot to build their new hotel. Well, there was a bit of a problem. See, the problem was the fact that there was already a hotel there. It's called the Fairmont. Now, the Fairmont was built 
in 1906 and considered a historic building. So Marriott was not allowed to tear it down. So what was Marriott going to do? Well, they ended up consulting with some engineers uh, for about five years so they could come up with a plan. They decided what they're going to do is lift up the Fairmont, put it on some trucks, and drive it away to an <laughs> empty lot about four blocks south of here. Well, believe it or not, folks, that plan actually worked. In fact, they earned a Guinness Book of World Record for it. In 1985, when they moved the Fairmont, at the time, it was the largest city building ever moved on pneumatic tires. And that's what they earned the Guinness Book of World Record for. Uh, that's uh, actually, of course, how the River Center got built. And by the way, the Fairmont uh, is still standing uh, and still in business today. They're located about four blocks south. Of <laughs> so that's how we gained the River Center. Okay. Well. All right, we're going to head back here, and I'm going to show you the tallest building in the city. Right here on the right. See that tall tower building with the big antenna sticking out of the top? That is the Tower of the Americas building, built here in 1968. It was built as the central attraction of the World's Fair, 750 like. <laughs> feet tall. And as you can see, guys, there are two floors at the top. Now, you can go up there if you want to. One of them is a restaurant restaurant is on a motorized floor so while you're having your That's meal you're actually turning 360 degrees and it's pretty cool because your view of the city is always changing the other floor is an observation deck so if you're not hungry or for whatever reason don't want to stop at the restaurant you do not have to guys you can take the elevator just straight up to the uh, observation deck check out the amazing views up there and i highly recommend it if you're interested been up there several times myself. Always have a good time. Cristo Rivera, la cosa de Cristo Rivera es aquí en San Antonio, Texas. Nice breeze. Eso estamos aquí viendo. Es lo que Dios quiere. Y montamos acá y lo que se va a hacer es Gloria a Cristo. Now, the buildings you're looking at back here, once we get past this walkway bridge, belong to the Convention Center. Oh, I can. There's the Henry B. Gonzalez I Convention Center, Center, built the same year as the uh -huh. World's Fair, 68. Henry Gonzalez was a native San Antonian, the first Mexican-American elected to Congress. So we named our Convention Center after him. If you take a look on the left, you're going to see a beautiful tiled mural up there. This mural, folks, was a uh, gift from the country of Mexico for the World's Fair back in 68. It's called the Confluence of Civilizations. Now this work, guys, is not a painting. It actually consists of over 400,000 naturally colored stones gathered in Mexico. Wow. Now each stone's very small, on average about an inch in diameter. So each stone had to be placed by hand. Can you imagine wow. one by one by one? On one of about 240 panels, and it took the artist, Mr. Juan O'Gorman, it took una por una, to puras piedritas. He did it all in his art studio in Mexico piedritas. City, and it shipped it up here in time for the World's Fair. So again, that's called the confluence of civilization. The coming together of civilization is literally what that means. Coming together. Now, bear with me momentarily, guys, because i got to get us turned around right underneath the steel bridge. We're not lost, are we? No, no, we're not lost. <laughs> Just a little fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there is a little lagoon area in the back, but the reason I'm turning around here is because the city closed it. They're not allowing any boats to go back there. Apparently, uh, they're doing some repair work. I'm not sure exactly what they're doing, but I can tell you this. The city sure is taking its time and doing it. They closed it about a year and a half ago. <laughs> so we're going to turn around here and I'll show you some other stuff as we exit. of civilizations is going to be on the right rather than the left. And I'll tell you a little bit more about it. If you look directly in the middle of that work of art, you're going to see a figure of a man there and a figure of a woman. Now, they're both wrapped in a white ribbon. And those figures are representations of Adam and Eve. So we got Adam and Eve right in the middle of the work. Then to the left and the right are various depictions of civilizations coming together. Again, that's called the Confluence of Civilization. It was a central theme of the World's Fair back in 68. 
That's what the artist was trying to capture with this work of art. And believe it or not, folks, he actually did this work of art twice. If your travels ever take you to Mexico City, the artist Juan O'Gorman was a native of Mexico City, and more of his work is on display there, including an identical confluence of civilization. So that means, folks, he devoted over two years of his life just to producing two works of art. That's amazing. All right. Now, a few minutes ago, I told you the story of how the Fairmont got moved in order to make room for the River Center, which is that hotel right over there. But the Market Street Bridge was very important in that process because this is the bridge they used to move the Fairmont to its new location. And what they had to do was actually drain this portion of the river so they could install scaffolding underneath the bridge to support it as the building went across. Well, the engineers were not exactly convinced that it would work. So guys, one of the engineers placed a glass bottle at the top of this stone wall here. He wanted to see if that glass bottle was going to break as the building went across. According to him, anyway, if the, build, if the uh, glass bottle broke, then the scaffolding wasn't going to hold the weight of the building. Well, fortunately, he was wrong. The scaffolding was enough to support the bridge. The glass bottle actually never did break. And it was a successful move. Like I mentioned earlier, guys, the Fairmont is just located about four blocks south of here. Saludos. And it is still in business today. Saludos. So that's part of the route they Saludos. took to uh, ah, yeah. <laughs> move the Fairmont. <laughs> All right, a couple of very low bridges here. We're going to take a break. And we're going to go see the most recent addition. <laughs> to our Riverwalk. It's called the Shops at River Center. The very same year they built the hotel, the Marriott River Center, they built the second largest shopping mall in the city. And it's called the Shops at River Center. Our uh, third and final ticket office is right here on the right. Don't have any boats loading or unloading right now. It looks like there was one that just left. But our boats now, guys, we're still very proud of them. They're different colors, different themes, and they're all electric, by the way. So that's why there's very, very little engine noise, and of course, no engine exhaust. So that's always a, a nice feature. Now look straight ahead, and you will see the million square foot shops at River Center. There's also more restaurants and bars on both sides of the river here, guys. So I highly encourage you to look around. Because after all, you may want to come back later and uh, get a closer look. There's a lot to do and a lot to see back here. Margarita. By the way, guys, Margarita if there's anyone on the boat that likes chocolate, there's a really good chocolate store that you're going to notice coming into view on the left. Giardelli. It's your so daily? you may want to stop by there. They've got some tasty treats, no doubt about it. Uh, the food court for the mall is all right here on the very first floor. The other floors, of course, all devoted to shopping. Guys, there's over 100 stores here. One of the most recent stores is a brand new Legoland Playland. So if you know anyone who likes Legos, you may want to bring them by. Se está acabando la batería, dice. Or if you like Lego, Lego you should stop by. Now I want to show you our citrus trees, folks. We have citrus trees right here on the river. The small green tree on the right bank of the river is an orange tree. So if you'd like, as we go underneath it, look up, because you will see a few oranges right at the top of this tree here. Right about now, look up. An orange over there. See two or three. A few right above us here. Yeah. That's our Texas orange tree, right? That's amazing, man. <laughs> now we also have a lemon tree. It's the light green tree on the other side of the walkway bridge. Now, folks, you see how we put the lemon tree in front of Margaritaville? <laughs> lime, go to lime. Those are just in case lemons, you know? Yeah. So look up. Now, all the lemons are, haven't turned yellow yet, yeah. so basically they look like limes at this point. Oh, yeah. But you'll see a lot of fruit up there. Yeah, I see that. Wow. Yeah, I see that. 
<laughs> the good news is, once these get ripe, we're going to be able to start selling margaritas again. I see. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the shops of River Center, guys. Well, we're going to head out of here, get back into the man-made section. And first, we're going to see a statue of Mr. St. Anthony himself. Now, as you might have guessed, the city of San Antonio is indeed named after St. Anthony, St. Anthony de Padua is his full name. <coughs> Excuse me. You're right. So on the right, there is a bronze statue of Mr. St. Anthony right here. You want to take a look? St. Anthony de Padua was a real person, guys. He lived in uh, Elizabeth, Portugal, as a priest back in the 12th century. Today he's known as the patron saint of children. The patron saint of all lost things. So welcome to St. Anthony City. In case you didn't know, guys, we had a really big birthday last year. We celebrated our 300th birthday. So we're over 300 years old now. We happen to be the seventh largest city in the U.S. Probably around 2 million people live here. It's a very diverse city, guys. Very eclectic. And the main reason that is, is because over the years, there's been many, many different cultures that have helped us settle this river. Including a very large German population. who started to come here in the early 1800s. Well, folks, they built this church right here on the right. That's a German Catholic church known as St. Joseph's Catholic Church. It was built in 1868. So it's now over 150 years old. Good, how are you, right? <laughs> We've got the Chamber of Commerce here on the right. But I'll be honest with you guys, there's not a whole lot to say about it. <laughs> Same old you. <laughs> On the left, we have a beautiful hotel called the Hilton Palacio del Rio. Now, there's a lot to say about this. This hotel was built here in 1968 in preparation for the World Spin. It also earned a Guinness Book of World Records, you guys, because that hotel only took seven months to build. And when it opened, by the way, it was a 500-room hotel. Now, I'll tell you how they did it. They built an assembly line eight miles south of here. They used the assembly line to bed each room in the, uh, in the hotel. So that means, folks, when the room got, at this, got to this location, it already had beds, it already had carpet, it had end tables, lights, lamps, pictures, wallpaper. Folks, they even put two mitts on the pillow. And we're going to take a left, and as soon as we do, we'll see the hotel directly in front of the boat. And I think you'll get a better sense of how they built it once again in only seven months. First of all, folks, you're going to notice that every room in the hotel is in the shape of a box. Well, each box arrived here already furnished and finished. Once it got here, they simply lifted it in place with a crane and simply started stacking all the boxes. And uh, once these boxes get stacked, you hook up the electricity, you hook up the water, and you have fully functioning hotel rooms uh, that are ready for guests. And every single day of the construction of this hotel, they would lift anywhere between 30 and 35 of these boxes. The first four bueno, floors of the building you're going to see once we get out from underneath the bridge are the, uh, the building's foundation. So those floors had to be built here. The elevator shafts also had to be built here, but everything else you see is the assembly line. That's how they built the hotel in only seven months back in 1968. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this will bring us right back to where we started. Thank you guys for coming out tonight. Thank you very much for your time, for your attention as well. Do me a favor, look around you. Just make sure all your belongings are with you. You don't leave anything. Carlos Mejía, Elizabeth, bendigo el San Sair. Bendiga mi hermano. Pablo de Sur, Joel Paul, Sol Luis Salazar. Norma Sánchez. I am allowed to accept tips, guys. Tips are always greatly, greatly okay. appreciated. Okay. Bendiciones, hermano. Thank bendiciones. you so much. Have a wonderful night. Give me one moment to get us straightened up a little bit better so I can get us tied to the dock.
And again, any questions you can think of, just let me know. Yes. Enjoy the river, folks. Thank you so much. Come back and see us again very soon. Lo dije, Elena, 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 Elena,